Turns out getting more live microbes in your diet might cut your risk of low testosterone by about a third. This finding came from a large national health survey that analyzed over 4,000 men. Researchers found a clear pattern. The more microbe rich foods a man ate, the lower his odds of having low testosterone. That came from a national representative database, the National Health and Nutrition Examination Survey. It's one of the most trusted public health databases in the United States. And this particular analysis focused on over 4,000 men. It was a strong link that stood out clearly in the data. This matters because it points to a real connection between diet and hormone health. You see, testosterone levels below 300 nanograms per deciliter are linked to low energy, poor muscle maintenance, fat gain, low mood, and brain fog. This isn't just something that affects a few men. Up to one in five men may fall into this low range. This study shows that what you eat, specifically the microbes in your food, might play a role. That's important because it points to something you can actually change that doesn't involve medication or testosterone therapy. So researchers used data for men age 20 and up, and each man had blood work done to measure total testosterone. They also filled out a 24-hour food log. Then the researchers used a government food database to estimate how many live micro beneficial bacteria or yeast were in the foods they ate. Based on that, men were divided into three groups. There was a low intake group, mostly processed or pasteurized foods, a medium intake, which was some raw fruits or vegetables, and a high intake, at least one serving of foods rich in live microbes like yogurt, kimchi, or fermented vegetables. Then they looked at how many men in each group had low testosterone. In the low micro group, 28 out of 100 had low testosterone. In the high micro group, 21 out of 100. That's a 7% point drop. But they calculated this a certain way so we can see the bigger picture. After adjusting for things like age, weight, alcohol use, smoking, health conditions, and diet, the researchers ran a statistical model to see how much micro-rich foods influence testosterone on their own. The result, men in a high micro group had 30% lower odds of having low testosterone compared to the men in the low group. Now, before we get into the mechanisms, here are three takeaways. First, eat high microbe foods. In this study, high intake meant foods with over 10 million live microbes per gram. You're going to find this in foods like raw and pasteurized sauerkraut, kimchi, and yogurt with live and active cultures. Me personally, I started with adding sauerkraut and a little bit of garlic. My wife wasn't too thrilled about that, especially those kisses afterwards. But make sure you're getting the real stuff. Pasteurized or shelf stable versions won't have the microbes you need. Always check the label. Second, feed those microbes once you've got those little buggers in check. We need to keep them alive. That means fiber, especially prebiotics. Good sources for this are things like garlic, leeks, or onions. And third, cut back on what hurts them. Reduce processed foods, seed oils, and excessive sugar. Now, let's go a little deeper into what our bacteria actually do when we feed them fiber. When they start to break down fiber, they create something called short-chain fatty acids, or SCFAs. The main ones are acetate, propionate, and butyrate. These little guys do three important things. First, they calm inflammation. Butyrate helps keep your gut lining strong and reduces inflammation signals in the body. That's a big deal because chronic inflammation can block your ability to make testosterone. Second, they help regulate hormone signals. SCFAs influence how your brain and your endocrine system talk to each other. Specifically, they help balance the signals that control testosterone production, like luteinizing hormone. Third, they may support testosterone by supporting the cells that make it. Your testes, they rely on something called Leydig cells to make testosterone. And in some studies, gut-derived compounds like SCFAs seem to help those cells work even better. So bottom line, more fiber, more SCFAs, better hormone support from the ground up. And this isn't the only study pointing in this direction. A few other recent ones back it up. In 2024, researchers looked at over 3,000 adults and found that people who ate more live microbe foods had lower rates of metabolic syndrome. Things like high blood sugar, belly fat, and high blood pressure, all of which are closely tied 
to testosterone level. One study found that older men with more firm acutes, a group of bacteria in the body that are beneficial, tend to have higher testosterone. And in some human studies, men with higher testosterone had more of a certain kind of gut bacteria like ruminococcus or acinobacter. These are broad categories or families of bacteria, kind of like last names that cover a bunch of related microbes. So it's not just one miracle microbe, it's entire groups that seem to support hormone health. In animal research, adding a probiotic like lactobacillus actually raised testosterone and reduced inflammation in the testes. And in germ-free mice, meaning mice that don't have any gut microbes, testosterone levels dropped significantly, but they were given healthy microbes and testosterone came shooting back up. So even though the exact mechanisms aren't fully mapped out, the direction is clear. Gut health isn't just about digestion. It has real implications for hormone balance, including testosterone. And what this data actually says is men who ate high microbe foods had 29% lower odds of testosterone deficiency. In men without heart disease or diabetes, that jumped to about 36% lower odds. And it followed a dose response pattern, meaning the more micro rich food men ate, the lower their odds of low testosterone. That's not just a random association. That's a consistent pattern that researchers paid attention to. And this could really matter for you. If your testosterone is borderline or just trending down with age, this might be part of the picture. It doesn't replace blood work and it doesn't replace training or sleep or other strategies, but it does point to something you can change today. What you're eating, not a magic fix, but part of a system that supports hormone health naturally through the gut. And the final note, there's no single food that fixes testosterone, but building small consistent habits with what you eat can help support healthy levels over time. Adding more live microbe foods might be one of the simplest places to start. We don't need to overhaul everything. Just build a few consistent habits and see how it plays out. If you want a list of foods that meet the high microbe threshold used in the study, drop the word microbe into the comments and I'll reply with the link where you can grab the full PDF food list for free. And this next video is about how to maximize your testosterone utilization, not just how much you produce, but how effectively your body uses it. So let's keep the conversation going and tune into that.